Hello and welcome and to Nebula welcome Talks. To this session of Before we begin, writing. we have a few updates so and reminders I'm for you. Smitha and I'm gonna give you we would love to have you be part of our Nebula session. community. So, and you can yeah. do so by logging on to so www.nebula.com where you can join communities related to your area of session. interest. Register for upcoming Nebula session, Talks, and book one-to-one Skylifts, and view other upcoming events. You can also take this opportunity so to connect with fellow learners or the speaker by sending a connection request. And when you connect with the speaker, task, you will be able to contact so the them directly as well as receive updates about their eye and talks. Kindly note that during the session, you will not be able to switch on your camera or unmute your mic. So if you are to ask questions during the talk, go to the writing, audience chat, then you have type your question and select to post your question. Writing, if your question has not be been answered during the talk, or you will be notified once it's been answered. Or if your question has not been answered during the talk, you can go to www.nebula.com and spin a quest and your questions will be answered. Thank you for joining us today. We hope this talk broadens your horizons and so takes you to new learning heights. Before we go for the whole details about the writing section, I would like to share my screen. So here you can check. So the overview of writing section is actually the time, which is for 60 minutes. And uh, you need to do two tasks, as I have told you. So minimum 150 words is the word count for the task one for which you need to give 20 minutes of your total time. So the next will be your task two, which will be minimum 250 words you have to write, which will be for 40 minutes again. So as I told you, for academic and general, this two will be different. In general, you have to go for letter writing. And then here you have to, in academic, you have to go for your, uh, you know, kind of a report writing. All the way, this writing task comprises of different categories related to marks how you will get the marks and how you have to go for, you know, particularly how you can score well in writing section. For that, before we go for the deep into the writing section, I would like to show you a quick game that you can go for. So I'll share my screen here. So you can use your chat and you can see some words are given in the slide. So you have to select the connectors. Now, if I talk about the connectors, it's the most important part of IELTS writing. So it's not only about writing an essay or a letter or something. It has to have some connectors in it, which is a kind of a score booster that we call. So here, if you see, there are a few words. You just have to select the correct connector, okay? And you have to give it in the chat box. Which one do you think out of all these words are the connectors? So I'll give you some seconds to do that. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So the words among all these words, the connectors are likewise. That is number one. To begin with, Number three, okay, right. Number two, which is moreover, okay. These three are called as connectors. So basically connectors means when you can join ideas together with a particular word and your essay or your letter or your report writing should be connected with this connectors, okay. So let's go to the marking criteria of writing section. The four main marking criteria of writing section are basically task response or achievement, coherence and cohesion, lexical resource, and grammatical range and accuracy. Okay. So first one, which is called as task response or achievement, is particularly about, uh, you know, you can say there will be a question and have you fulfilled all the criteria of the question or not will be checked. So it will be divided into parts, okay? And you have to fulfill all the criteria. So 25% of marks will be from those that task response or achievement, okay? So next 25% of marks will come from coherence and cohesion, which is called paragraphing and linking words. The game that we have just done 
that is actually a kind of cohesive devices which falls under the cohesion category okay so your ideas should be logical it should be connected and it should have a well organized structure okay next is your lexical resource which is nothing but vocabulary so you have to have an advanced level of vocabulary along with there should be less repetitions in your essay okay and the last one but not the least that is called grammatical range and accuracy you have to use wide range of grammatical structures in your essay or your writing okay so if you are writing a report which i told you about the writing academic section of ielts there you have to also apply minimum word count that is 150 words along with whatever the key points are there in that graph you have to highlight those same goes for your letter writing of general ielts there you have to cover all the bullet points that is that will be given in the question along with minimum word count that is again 150 words this thing you have to take care for task one for task achievement okay same thing for task achievement for task two will be minimum to 50 words that you have to write okay and you have to understand the question fully and you have to answer all parts of the question okay now coherence and cohesion as i told you sentence should be in logically in order paragraph should have a proper format and you should have a logical flow in your writing so anyone can read it with a easy understanding so that should be your essay and same goes for grammatical range and accuracy for both of the tasks you have to have a correct grammar okay so for 20 minutes that will be given for task one the time is less because the weightage of marks is also less if you consider the whole writing section as 100 percent of marks you will be only getting 20 minutes because the marking is also very less but it doesn't mean that it doesn't have any importance so writing task one you should finish it early within the 20 minutes of time in academic IELTS, you have to have a particular you know explanation for a bar or a line diagram or a pie chart or a table there can be two more different question which is map and process diagram so that is basically you have to give a report on it remember everything that you will be writing here will be in passive voice you should not use any active voices in it okay so you have to report the main features you have to explain it and you have to compare whatever data will be there and you have to also identify the significance of the writing okay as i told you that 20 minutes will be same for general writing as well so you have to have three different types of letter which you will be uh, writing it can be a formal letter it can be a semi-formal letter and it can be an informal letter so uh, now you will be getting just one question and you have to you know give your answer on the basis of that question you have to identify the question and you have to select is it a formal one semi-formal one or an informal okay so the topics can also vary the topics, probably the letter question that you will be getting can be a request letter, can be a complaint letter, can be an apology letter or anything else. You can see on the screen, there can be a lot of topics uh, that you can get your question from. Okay. So in letter writing, remember, each question will have three bullet points and you have to cover all of them to get the highest score in task achievement. So this is a sample question for your academic IELTS writing. So if you see it in here, there is a bar diagram which has two years, okay? And two different colors has been given for different years. The blue color one is 1990 and the purple one is for 2010. So exactly kind of this kind of, you know, report you are going to get in your IELTS writing task. Okay, so 20 minutes will be there to finish this off. So how will you write this question? How will you structure or how will you give the format to this question is the actual criteria. So you can see the question here says the chart gives the information on the percentage of British people giving money to charity by age range 
for the years 1990 and 2010. So you have to compare the data between these donations in 1990 and 2010 given by British people and you have to compare this, okay? Letter writing will be something like this. You can see the topic has been given that you were going to another country to study. You would like to do a part-time job while you were studying. So you have to ask your friend, you know, who lives there for some kind of help. So you have to write a letter to a friend, okay? And three bullet points has been given, which it says that gives detail of your study plans, explain why you want to get a part-time job, and suggest how your friend could help to find you a job, okay? So these three bullet points, and by looking at the question, you have to understand what type of this letter will be. As I have given you, or I have given you an example of formal, semi-formal, and informal, which category this letter format will fit, okay? So when we say we are writing to a friend, it basically, or you can, you can generally think about that it can be an informal letter, okay? So your writing, your tone, your way of saying or way of writing this whole letter will be in informal manner, okay? So you have to choose it, choose the words accordingly. You have to choose the way of writing it accordingly. So writing task two, that will have time for 40 minutes, okay? And as I told you, it can be an essay writing, okay? So the topics will vary again. So topics can be from environment to immigration, okay? Culture, politics, finance, any kind of current topic they will talk, take and then they will give you the question on it. Now here you will be getting six different types of questions, okay? It can be an opinion essay. It can be an agree, disagree, okay? It can be a discussion essay, probably an advantage, disadvantage one, or probably a problem, or probably reasons of problem, or you have to offer a solution on it. Or the last one, which is a two-part question essay, okay? So you can get any one, the topic can vary, and you can get any one from these types of questions. So each type of question will have different formats and different way of writing. So you just have to be sure about which is the correct format for what type of question. So you have to gain knowledge on that part and also you have to check whether you have fulfilled the whole criteria of the question. Have you written down all the parts which you know uh, covers all the parts of the questions and have you written it with you know examples or do you have a proper conclusion which is based on that particular question, okay? So that will fulfill your essay. Remember to write 250 words minimum because the under length essays will get very less marks. So some question types, you can see it in here, okay? So these are three types of questions that I have given it in here for you to check in the slide. So first question is, do you agree or disagree? If you can go through the questions, you will see that these questions are very easy, very common, okay? That means the IELTS won't give you difficulties in, you know, remembering or, you know, some kind of uh, difficult topics that you have to apply for. They will be taking out very general topics where you have to write your normal answers. Remember, your IELTS writing should be precise enough. It should not be too long as well, although there is no maximum limit, but you have to be carefully writing all these parts, okay? So the first question says, some people believe that children's leisure activities must be educational, otherwise they are a complete waste of time, okay? So do you agree or disagree? Now here also, you have to remember, you have to choose a side and you have to write the whole answer based on that side. So if you agree, then you can say agree, or if you disagree, you can say disagree, and then, you know, you have to dedicate your whole answer with this thing, okay? Similarly, for the next one, which is, you know, uh, a two-part question, what factor contributes to the job satisfaction? And how realistic is the expectation of job satisfaction for all workers? Okay, so here, what you have to do is that you have to make 
two parts in the question and you have to answer all the parts of the question equally. Okay. Third one, similarly, advantage, disadvantage question, where you have to write about the advantages and disadvantages of a particular situation with proper examples. So let's talk about the mistakes that most of the students make while writing. Okay. So it's not particularly about the letter writing or an essay writing. It's mostly about the whole writing section. Okay. That is applicable for the people who are going for IELTS academic or for general IELTS. Okay. So the first mistake that most of the students make is not reading the question properly. Okay. Make a habit of reading the question twice. If you can't understand it, make it twice. Okay. So take time, read through the question and understand what are the parts which has been given there. So next one is not giving or not having a plan before you start writing. It happens with a lot of students that they don't plan before they start writing. Because once you start writing, then you can't go back and erase the points or you cannot add any points. So you have to be very careful while planning. Okay. So take five minutes extra or five minutes before you start writing and then you can plan it. Okay, make a blueprint. The third one is not using formal words where needed. Okay, so some, uh, especially in task two, you require to write all letters or all words, mostly you can say academic words. So those academic words are actually needed when you want to get a good score. So if you use casual words or spoken words in writing, then probably you will not get the desired score. Similarly, if you go for a letter writing or a report writing, you have to choose your words accordingly. If you're writing a formal letter, then you have to use formal words. If you want to write a casual letter or an informal letter, you have to choose informal words. Okay. The fourth one is writing an under length answer. So you probably are aware till now that you have to write 150 words minimum for task one and 250 words minimum for task two. So somehow if your words falls below that, below that word count, then you will be getting a penalty. Okay. So make sure you can apply some techniques or if you have time, then you can count each and every word to check that you have written a full length essay. Okay. Now, in task two also, you have to clear your position, okay? And in letter or in report, you have to clear your position and tone, okay? So in task two, when you will be clearing, suppose there is a question for agree, disagree. So you have to clear your position. Do you agree or disagree? And it should be maintained throughout your essay, okay? Same goes for letter writing. So if you have a formal tone in the starting of the letter, you should maintain towards the end of it, okay? Next is incomplete information. So if you do not write all parts fully and if you give some more importance to one paragraph and if you give less, less importance to another paragraph, then it means you have written something incomplete. So you have to check if you have written a full-fledged answer or not, okay? The another one, which is a very minor one, but cost you a big mark, that is spelling and grammatical errors. So you have to have a proof grade of your answer. That means after you finish your, with your writing and you have some time in front of you, like suppose two minutes or three minutes, you can quickly have a check for your spellings, okay, and grammar. If you are making a mistake, correct it and then submit because that can cost you a big mark. Next is using inappropriate memorized phrases. So we should not be writing any kind of quotations or any kind of uh, phrasal verbs or idioms in writing, okay? Because idiomatic languages and phrasal verbs are not in uh, written words or academic words. So we should avoid writing those, okay? The last one is called overgeneralization. That means few of the sentences that we write have a very generalized meaning in it. And we can say that it has a judgment that we give through those lines. So we should avoid writing those sentences. Okay. So uh, basically these are the mistakes overall that students do make. There are a lot of minor things that we need to check on the writing task of student 
to check that why they are not getting the desired band score or how they will get the desired band score. Okay. So I'll also give you some tips. So you have to read the question fully, as I told you, that it is very important. I cannot say how much important it is. Just by saying that if you just read the question and then you start writing, it happens that in the middle of the essay, you will realize that you have not added a very important point. So in those cases, we should be careful that we should plan before writing and we should re uh, read the question at least twice to understand all parts of the question. Next is, you know, brainstorming the points before you start writing. As I told you, planning is something that all the high band scorers do. So they have to plan it. You have to make a blueprint. Then you start writing. Okay. Learn to use the connectors appropriately. So as I told you in the beginning of this session, that you have to use the connectors more. Okay. And those connectors will be uh, you know, used for giving a sequence or a kind of a chronological order to your writing. So anyone can read it very easily and can follow it very easily. So the connectors has a very important role to play. But also you have to be careful that you should be using the connectors appropriately in appropriate places. Okay. Next one is learn the format for each type of question. This is also important because every question has a different kind of a structure and there are some minor differences between all of them that you should know okay before you start writing so if it is an advantage disadvantage essay properly it's not exactly same like your discussion essay so you have to know that okay you have to be careful about writing that uh, this is a discussion essay and this is an advantage disadvantage essay same thing goes for your letter writing or you know a uh, uh, first task which is your report writing you can't just use the similar kind of words which you have used for your graph and you can use a similar kind of words for a map so there has to be a difference so you should know the format very appropriately okay next is acquiring knowledge on wide range of grammatical structure and vocabulary so knowing the words is not enough so you should have a range of vocabulary so that you can utilize it you know simultaneously the repetition of the same word will give you or will cost you a negative mark okay so that that's why you should know a lot of vocabularies also you should be also utilizing a lot of grammatical structures you should not stick with just one tense you should be able to use different tenses in the different writing section okay and the last one, which I have already told you, that always keep some time for proofreading. So proofreading is very important. So when you will be proofreading, you will get your own mistakes. Okay. So you have to be careful that you are not making a spelling. You are not making a grammatical error. And if you have made it before time, you can correct it. And then you can submit once you are thorough with it. Okay. So I will start with the question answer round now. So if you have any questions, you can give it on the chat box. Uh, how can I test my IELTS writing skills? Okay, that's a good question. So uh, the thing is that you have got uh, four marking criteria that I have recently shown you. Task achievement, vocabulary, grammar, and the next one is coherence, cohesion. So for checking it, there is a public band descriptor that is available in PDFs. You can just Google it and you can get it. And you can match your own uh, answer with the points given for different band score. That is one way to do. However, I would not suggest to, you know, uh, go and match with some different type of sample answers because probably you won't have that, you know, kind of credentials to check those. So I think it will be uh, actually good to, you know, take an evaluator or probably, uh, you know, some kind of a training so that you can check your own answer. Okay. Okay. So uh, what are some of the time management strategies while attempting IELTS writing task? Yeah. So uh, time management is something if I, you ask me personally, what I used to do is that although it is 60 minutes of total time, 
20 minutes for the task one and 40 minutes for task two. I would suggest, and you can keep in your hand, 15 minutes for task one and then rest time for task two. If you ask me why, then I would say that 15 minutes is enough to write a letter or a task one report writing because you have to write less, okay, less number of content, less number of words. But yes, the task two takes more time because you have to write your opinion, you provide, you have to provide a kind of a thesis writing. So it does take time. And when you will be practicing, make sure that you put on a timer in front of you while practicing and exactly take the time that you will be taking in the examination. That will help you a lot. Okay. So should I attempt a task with pencil or pen? Well, there is no such mandatory rule for a writing task. You can use either a pen or a pencil. But uh, to my opinion, I guess pencil would be better so that you can erase it if there is a mistake and you can rewrite it. Okay. But yes, some students are comfortable with the pen. So you can definitely go for a pen. Okay, uh, there's one more question that is, how can I organize the information in my task one? So uh, for that, you have to be precise. Are you writing a task one in general IELTS or academic IELTS? But uh, how you will organize, you have to make sure that you know the format and you have a proper connector to join all your sentences. So if you want to have an organized essay, you have to follow the rules. So for rules, you have to know more about the IELTS writing task, okay? So anyways, I will be starting probably with a new uh, talk with uh, some more detail about the writing task. So there you can join or also you can join with our live in classes to know more about the formats and everything. Okay. So... Uh, I guess that's it. Uh, do you guys have any more questions? Okay, any resources that you would recommend for preparing the IELTS? Okay, so there are a lot of books available from Cambridge, which are the authenticated materials. So you can get them online or you can also purchase them on shops. So I guess those will be the exact uh, authenticated materials that you can use for your preparation. Okay, I will see that, yes, uh, there are some other materials as available as well. So look for it. If you can find something useful, then you can definitely use. Okay, so I guess that's it. Uh, so stay connected, stay connected with the community as well. So if you want to get more information, okay. And there will be some classes which will be conducted by Nebula. There are a lot of trainers who are available also. So if you want to get more insights, uh, I think you can join them or follow the Nebula Talks, okay? So I hope that this was insightful for you as a kind of an, you know, uh, a new session. Okay, I just got one more question where we can find further sessions from you. Yes, that's what I was saying that you can follow me uh, on the Nebula profile itself. And whatever upcoming classes I will have, I probably will start with the live in classes as well. So you can also join there. Okay. So thank you so much, everyone. So I hope that this session was helpful to you to some extent. Okay. Uh, we will soon meet again. Okay. Take care and bye-bye.